listen to. If you ask a Resident Evil fan what their favorite game in the series is, you'll most likely hear Resident Evil 2 for Remake. And for good reason. These games are absolutely solid. I mean, what's not the love? The unforgiving gameplay, the mix of puzzles and horror, the no hand-holding approach of making you have to choose fight or flight. They're classic. But today I'm not here to talk about those games. No, sir. Today I'm going to touch on what many consider to be the black sheep of the series. Meet Resident Evil Outbreak. The first game in the series to feature the glory of the World Wide Web. Unfortunately, when it came out, many fans passed over due to the steep requirements for said glory. See, first you needed an expensive network adapter. Cha-ching! And if 10 to 13 second loading screens every few minutes weren't your bag, well, now you needed the hard drive add-on as well. Cha-ching! Both of these items in the game would add up to be over $200 Canadian. That's kind of steep. You could of course play it offline, but then you were stuck with annoying bots who usually ended up dead 9 out of 10 times. And come on, you don't buy a multiplayer co-op game for the single player. Many fans also found the game to be just a little too unforgiving, which again, with bad AI, doesn't make for a very fun experience. But if you did get to experience this game in its prime, then you know it was an entirely different animal when you went online. That unforgiving gameplay suddenly felt like it was the thing keeping you drawn in. You and three other friends or strangers would have to rely on each other through boneheaded basic communication and animations, scavenging every last bullet and green herb just to get that rewarding feeling of barely beating the level in danger status at 95% infection. And then you'd start getting attached to your new friends and every time you guys get separated it's like, ah, uh, what do I do? Eventually, though, you learn all the levels and routes. You become an expert, jacked into the proverbial matrix, quoting all the cutscenes and showing all these new players what's what. Until you turn up the difficulty again, and you're back to square one. The game felt true to survival horror, and it felt true to the Resident Evil series. And somehow it did it as a co-op game. It's as classic as the series goes in my eyes. The level designs are interesting and well thought out, not to mention a few familiar locations of people. And in my opinion, I think the controls and Outbreak are the best they've ever been in this genre. The game wasn't without its flaws. Those 10 to 13 second loading screens were sometimes seconds apart from each other. There were desync issues and subpar AI, and unfortunately the online servers went down in 2007. Which is why I proposed the idea. Capcom, remaster Outbreak. The game was obviously too ahead of its time with the whole needing add-ons on your PS2 to play it fully, and with a remaster, much of the flaws wouldn't be there. The long loading times would be eliminated, and we all got internet now, you dummies. Fans have been clamoring for it for years. And with the success of the Resident Evil Remake Remaster, there hasn't been a better time. I've also heard some people say the netcode was lost and blah blah blah. Look, modders in Germany have had this shit down for years. Check out Observe.org. These guys revived and modded the game to be played online through their own server. And they've done a great job running and updating it over the years. So if a few fans in Germany can do this, then what gives Capcom? Sales? The fans have obviously expressed interest. And unless you've lost the source code, I, I can't see it being that expensive. So, come on Capcom, don't let this gem be lost in time. Remaster Resident Evil Outbreak. I mean, I'll at least buy it. I don't think 9-11 really happened. You ever see Twin Towers what, before 9-11? Go to New York, see Twin Towers? I only saw it in movies. Movies are real. Real? Real. Are they? Hear that? Bells. School's out. 400 yards. 300 yards. 100 yards! It's hungry, sir! New Tiberium harvesting methods instituted by the Brotherhood of Nod increase profitability by 49%. There we are, so now they can go back in oven for another 10 minutes. You can see they've come out and they look quite nice. Did you know that Squaresoft almost went bankrupt in 1987? It's true. In fact, they came so close that they thought they were already making their final game. The game that was directed by Hironobu Sakaguchi was going to be designed to compete with Enix's popular Dragon Quest game. All of Square's future depended on the success of this one last title. If it failed, the company would fail. 
and thus Square named the game Final Fantasy. Because that's what it was for them. A work of pure passion. One last attempt at changing the mold. And not only did Final Fantasy sell millions and save Square, but it gave birth to one of the most famous JRPG series of all time. So next time someone goes, how can it be the Final Fantasy if there's 15 of them? Let them know that, at one point, there was just one Final Fantasy. And for Square, it was really their Final Fantasy. You are How is it going, Mr. Man? It's me, Little Man, Little Man, Little Man. Rag your body. Rag, rag, rag. Rag your body. With Resident Evil 7 being the return of the roots we've been waiting for, it's made me aware of how much I miss the survival horror genre. The unforgiving difficulty and the uneasy mood you experience while solving a puzzle, or stopping to read a paper that gives you a small idea of what the hell happened. Very few modern horror games come close to recreating the pacing and tension of a good old survival horror game. But Darkwood isn't one of those games. In fact, Darkwood isn't like many games at all. Developed by Acid Wizard Studios, Darkwood is a few horror enthusiasts answer to the industry survival horror drought. A game that starts you out by making you put your dog out of its misery, Darkwood is a little bit overwhelming in how much its atmosphere can make you feel like you just want to give up. See, you don't really have many friends in this game. In fact, I don't even think you have a name. You'll spend your daylight talking to strange faces or combating wild animals. Or maybe you're just out collecting a few useful crafting materials. However, as you begin to pick your immediate surroundings dry, you'll realize that you have to venture further and further out into the darkwood just to find things you haven't already plundered. Few games capture the essence of an environment so dark and unforgiving and non-welcoming. And with an almost love crafty and vibe to it, the art in this game is some of the best I've ever seen in the genre. There's so much atmosphere and ambience to soak up that... Oh jeez. I've stood around too long. See, you gotta make sure you're not outside when the sun goes down, cause... Well, I'll let you find out for yourself. Darkwood is a game for those who've yearned for the classic survival horror experience of old. And if you're one of those people, well, do yourself a favor and check out this 2014 top-down indie game. Because the last time I felt this feeling from a game, I was 12 years old. Sitting in my basement, lights out. Experiencing my first time entering the other world in Silent Hill 3. That's the kind of stuff that sticks with you. I know it's stuck with me. I'm looking right into the space and goes, listen, I love you. And I went, okay, 